Hey everyone! So, in our guides, we often break down some of the many ways to jungle that enable you to crush your solo queue games. On our more opinion-based guides, we pair them with disclaimers, saying that we're not advocating to play the exact style that we preach in every game, but instead, understand the benefits as this process will improve your decision-making as a jungler. For example, we have the win in 3 minutes as a jungler, how to actually play jungle by a mid lane main, and the most destructive mentality, etc. These are all very different from each other and a problem that you may run into is figuring out when to actually use these strategies in your own games. In this guide, we're going to teach you how to create your own game plan as a jungler. So creating the correct game plan is one of the most challenging things to actually teach players in a single video. The reason it's hard is because the main reason League is such a popular and addictive game. There's just so many variables with 148 champions, there's one quadrillion different draft phases possible making every game unique. The only thing that remains the same is your teammates blaming the jungler for world hunger. But with such an overwhelming number of possibilities, how could anyone know how to play correctly in every game? Well, we've simplified the thought process that many pro players use to quickly figure out what the winning game plan is. We'll both teach you this thought process and simulate drafts during this guide so that you can test how you fare in your own games when creating a winning game plan right now. To do this, we're going to break this guide down into three different lobbies with three different junglers. In each lobby, you'll be shown six key ways to approach the first 15 minutes of the game as a jungler, and then asked to decide what you shouldn't do in your games. Let's quickly run through the six different options junglers have, then get into the lobby. First, we have ganking lanes, which refers to playing to actively make ganks work across multiple lanes while farming. Second, we have to camp a lane. This is if you want to focus on snowballing one of your specific teammates or shutting down a specific player. Third, we have playing for objectives, securing early dragons and rift heroes. Fourth, we have counter jungling, focusing on gaining golden XP leads over your jungle counterpart. Fifth, we have power farming, where you focus completely on yourself and only make plays that guarantee you get an immediate payoff. Sixth, we have counter ganking. This is where you want to protect vulnerable laners from predictable aggressive junglers. Every jungler has their own strengths and weaknesses, so you really need to think about what your champion is good and bad at. Xin Zhao is great at ganking and camping lanes, but mediocre when it comes to stuff like farming. Or Ivern is good at counter jungling and counter ganks, but struggles a bit at doing objectives and power farming. With our six choices now introduced, let's get you into your first lobby. You're playing Warwick this game. You have a Wukong, Yasuo, Aphelios, and Thresh. You're against Orn, Elise, Akali, Kogma, and Lulu. With our six ways to play out the first 15 minutes of the game, you may think they all seem like good choices if well executed. That's where the thought process that we want to highlight comes in. There will almost always be multiple ways to win the game, but also certain ways to lose the game. By ruling out the bad options, we're only left with viable ones. So we want you to eliminate the bad ones. What should you not do as a Warwick in the first 15 minutes? No one will know if you pause for more time. If you crossed off ganking lanes, counter jungling, and objectives, you'd be correct. The why is fairly simple. Take a look at the enemy team composition. It's almost entirely magic damage. The easiest way to beat crippled 1 damage type compositions is to just never take any risks. There is no responsibility for the Warwick to get a lead this game. If he gets to 15 or 20 minutes and gets his jungle item plus the specter's cowl, he'll be starting to reach unkillable status and auto win the game. Therefore. Any option with inherent risk is flawed this game. You don't need to gank and get your teammates ahead since there's a risk associated with most ganks. You don't need to invade and out jungle Elise either. And there's no reason to stress over Dragon Soul this game as you'll be winning the game at the 25 minute mark if things go according to plan. But let's see what actually happens. The game starts with a cheeky level 1 invade by Warwick's team. Warwick's team's level 1 is miles stronger than Elise's so they easily brute force the buff. This leads into a successful 3 buff start from Warwick as he then does blue into wolves into his red buff. Right after, he correctly reads that Elise is likely to try and get back into the game by ganking immediately after hitting level 3. Countering the gank onto this overextended Yasuo is exactly what we want to see out of Warwick this game. Then his first mistake comes through. He wastes a bit of time ganking Akali. With no reliable way to kill her through Shroud, this is a fairly low percentage gank and not playing towards his win condition. As we know, there's no real reason to shut Akali down, as he'll be stacking MR later anyways. Then he commits to ganking bottom. We've stated that this enemy team composition is primarily magic damage, but if there is one threat, it'd be Kog'Maw. 
I mean, it's not like he does entirely magic damage. It's more of a 50-50 split of magical and physical. Shutting down the single threat that could arise this game is a good call. After netting a 1 for 1 trade, what do you think he should do with the wave though? Push it or let it freeze? So the process here isn't about what's correct, but more importantly what isn't an option. First of all, we know the wave is going to push towards our Aphelios because there are more blue minions than red minions. Additionally, the wave is on the enemy's side of the lane, which means their minions will reinforce faster than ours. Freezing is a fine choice because our goal is to stall out this game. Freezing the wave would let it push super hard into his Aphelios and would let him stay safe from ganks by having the lane end up like this by the time he gets back. Warwick instead opts to push the wave and crash it. Unfortunately, both him and Thrash don't have much AoE, so this stalls out for quite a while, eventually ending up with him being punished. Pushing the wave just wasn't an option. That brings us to a new question though. This went wrong because he's Warwick. What if he was playing Graves or Zac? Both of them are hard scaling champions who can easily itemize MR. What should they have done in this situation? Well, there's no wrong answer here. We could all get argumentative here and give a billion reasons why one option is correct over the other, but both options achieve a fairly similar goal. Freezing does the exact thing that we discuss. It keeps Aphelio safe and makes sure that he doesn't get too far behind. But pushing the wave also plays into the goal of funneling more gold onto yourself. Getting to these MR items faster would let Zac or Graves 1v9 more quickly. Juggling between viable choices is where playstyle and preference come into play. If you're a team player and believe that playing for the team is the same as playing for yourself, then by all means freeze. If you hate your teammates, especially because Aphelios died while you're ganking, then take the wave and let him be a bit more vulnerable. He's gonna die again anyways, right? Choices like these can always be fueled by elo, your current mood, game flow, etc. We often talk about the right choice, but League is a complex game. It's impossible to make the 100% correct play at all times, especially in the heat of the moment. As long as you base your decisions on a solid foundation, then it's okay to play to your personal strengths. But anyways, at this point, Warwick continues making incorrect choices based on the specific game. He looks for risky invades when he has no responsibility of getting ahead. Or he overforces to try and steal Dragon when he doesn't really need to. We've begun questioning the strength of Dragons, and while you don't want to give all of them for free, as we said, he just needs to stall a bit longer until he and his team get MR and basically auto win. This was definitely a poor choice. Because he didn't come into this with a solid game plan, his lousy options kept piling on top of each other. The game ends at 23 minutes at a 15k gold deficit. Had he just made a simple checklist of what he shouldn't do this game, Warwick would have probably gone to bed happy with his free LP. On to our second draft phase. Through Shivana, you have Master Yi top, Vladimir mid, Ezreal ADC, and Nami support. The enemy has Pike top, Camille jungle, Cassiopeia mid, and the fasting Senna with set bot lane. Go ahead and rule out the things that you shouldn't do in the first 15 minutes. Pause if you need more time. If you cross out gank lanes and camp a lane, you'd be correct. Let us explain. Shivana is not a strong ganker as she doesn't have a gap closer or really any CC alongside mediocre early game damage. Then look at her lanes. None of them have strong follow up and are all also generally outmatched early as well. So ganking lanes isn't a good plan for Shivana here. Camping a lane is something that you should look out for when you do have 1v9 champions on your team like the Master Yi and Vladimir who can totally take over the game similar to having a Cassidy. The problem is that neither Yi or Vlad have any engage to work with while Shivana has none either. With a strong early game jungler on the enemy team, camping lanes would be unlikely to work out as it'd be hard to land kills and you'd be vulnerable to counter gains. The rest of our options are all viable as a path to victory for the Shivana, including counter ganking, which we'll talk more about as we get into it. She starts red, into raptors, and paths topside. Meanwhile, Camille kicks things off in her own game plan, with a successful gank onto the Vladimir and then paths bot side. There wasn't much to do about this as a level 2 Shivana, so he just keeps clearing towards the topside. She finishes taking her blue, romp, wolves, and then scuttlecrab. After, based on the junglers and everything we know so far, what do you think Shivana should do? If you answered counter jungle Camille's topside, you'd be correct. You can't get emotionally upset that the enemy can gank and you can't. That's just not how the matchup works this game. But you can punish her for being so gank heavy. Camille is notoriously terrible at killing AoE camps and we know for a fact that she left Raptors and Krugs up. Not only that, but there's nothing to really counter gank at the moment. 
Vladimir is safe in mid with Poole, and her bot lane is also chilling near their tower. We quickly want to mention a hypothetical scenario where counter ganking could be viable and why we didn't cross it out during draft. So at this moment, Shivana knows that Camille wants to get aggressive and look for ganks. Since she's confirmed to be bot side, she'd either try to gank mid or bot. Both of these lanes are positioned safely and very hard to gank right now, leaving an invade as the only viable option. However, if we pretend that Vladimir is a Lux and pushed up a little further in lane, you can then start to argue that moving to the side brush and looking for a counter gank is a better choice than invading, which again, will be a decision that you can make depending on how you want to play the game. Counter ganking is a bit more leaning towards a selfless style of jungle. There's potential payoff if done successfully, or you could just be wasting your time. Counter jungling would snowball you really far ahead of Camille while leaving your mid laner to potentially feed. Luckily for Shivana, she has a Vladimir near his tower who can reliably pull away from any Camille gank. So counter jungling here would be super effective at snowballing her lead. Instead, what ends up happening is Shivana just recalls, throwing away her window to equalize things after Camille's opening gank. While she's recalling, we can see Camille is wandering aimlessly looking to gank two safe lanes. She wastes so much time here that Shivana paths bot and clears her own raptors before Camille finally decides to recall and path topside. Shivana then looks to gank mid, which, as we know, has a super low chance of working. This move also risks straight up losing the game if she were to get counter ganked by the Camille. Shivana repeatedly misses opportunities to play to her strengths until this moment. We'll now start to see Shivana temporarily playing to her winning game plan. After spotting Camille topside, she converts it into a dragon secure. In one of our most recent guides, we discuss how early game dragons can be a bit pointless to take if you're conceding other options for them. But in this specific case, Shivana has plenty of time to kill Dragon, then counter jungle Camille's bot side and recall to go back to her own jungle. Camille is wasting so much time top with no pivot options to punish Shivana for making a pit stop at Dragon, plus she's fairly quick at doing it anyways. As Shivana is stealing Gromp, Camille then ganks top and forces Yi's flash. She spent so much time trying to gank that despite Shivana not punishing correctly during this game, she's still nearly two levels up on Camille. Instead of continuing to play to her strengths and counter jungle wolves, Shivana loses her mind and tries to equalize by ganking bot, which results in one of the worst ganks we've ever seen. After respawning, she yet again tries another low chance gank and trades one for one. By consistently deviating from her win conditions by trying to gank lanes instead of crossing it off during draft phase, she's managed to become the one who falls two levels behind Camille at the 20 minute mark and loses the game. Alright, on to your last replay. Let's take a look at our challenger smurf this time instead. You are Ezreal this game. You have Fiora top, Silas mid, Victor ADC, and Talia support. You're against Rumble top, Shaco jungle, Cassid in mid, Ash ADC, and Soraka support. What should you not do as Ezreal in the first 15 minutes of this game? Pause if you need more time. We believe it's correct to cross out objectives, power farming, camping a lane, and counter jungling. Hopefully you notice that every single one of these lanes is super volatile. You have two melee matchups in both top and mid, and then two super poke heavy bot lane duos. Drafts like these occur fairly frequently. Noticing them and adapting correctly is crucial for success. Not only are the matchups volatile, but the enemy has a gank heavy jungler in Shaco. This game will very likely boil down to whoever ganks more of these volatile lanes or counter ganks the other. Spending too much time farming in these types of games can very easily lead to you having three losing lanes and forfeiting the game. Of course, many of you probably don't know what jungle Ezreal excels at, which is fair since he's not really played all that often at the moment. Basically, he's great at any sort of skirmish. Whether it comes from ganks or scuttlecrab fights, etc., with his high early DPS and mobility. Not only that, but he's a notoriously bad early clear champion, much like Elise or Camille. Therefore, this game is literally perfect for Ezreal. Right after red, he's already in the mindset that he should spam gank lanes and immediately goes mid to push Kassadin out of lane, winning his Silas the early game. While it only results in chunking him, it does let him pad towards bot lane anyways. As predicted, these lanes are immediately fighting and have traded kills already so Ezreal swoops in and cleans up the Ash that was playing overly aggressive. Not wanting to stay level 2 his whole life, he can now easily head towards his blue and gromp into Scuttlecrab. Yet again, we see the volatility of the mid lane matchup in play. Kassadin, despite being a weak early champion, can play aggressive in this matchup and Ezreal is already back here to punish. This all looks too easy, but it's because Ezreal took the time to make a game plan before the game started. Due to his adaptation, he's ganked 3 times already compared to Shaco only ganking once so far. 
But more importantly, he's not behind Shaco because the ganks were very likely to work out due to the nature of the lanes. We're not going to go super in-depth on this game because it's literally won by just spam ganking. The strategy could have been employed by any aggressive early game jungler such as Elise, Rek'Sai, or Jarvan. They all function similarly to Ezreal who loves to gank and skirmish in the early game. By the way, if you want to master your draft phase and always have a game-winning plan, then you should sign up for skillcap.com. We'll be creating more game plan guides just like this one and have hundreds of the best jungle guides on the internet that you can't find anywhere else. We're so confident in our service that you can even see what rank we think you'll climb to before subscribing to the long-term plan. If you don't reach that rank while actively using Skillcapped, you'll be eligible for a full refund. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe today if you're serious about improving. All right guys, that's going to wrap up our guide for creating a game plan as a jungler. How did you do during our draft simulations? Let us know in the comments below along with your feedback for how we did in this guide. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.